Good evening, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey, Adam G. Tonight, I have a very special guest once again. Her awe-inspiring performance in an international modeling competition may have been five years ago, but we are still far from over her. Whether it's her incredible screen presence, divine looks, or just her beautiful smile, we can all agree that this beautiful woman just refuses to leave our hearts. So without further ado, here she is. I so love my life. Please say hello to Miss Universe Philippines, Philippines Pangasinan 2021 candidate, Maureen Rubowitz. Hi, Maureen. Hello. Hi, Adam. <laughs> thank you for having me. No, I should be the one to thank you <laughs> for, 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 for allowing me to interview you, considering that you've been leading a very hectic schedule. Yes, I still have my makeup on from my shoot. <laughs> oh, Marie, Marie Natics, alam yun na ha, kung anong peg ng shoot niya next. Take a look at her eye makeup right now. <laughs> what, you have to wait a few more weeks for... Yeah, for so... Shows. But as I've said earlier, thank you so much. You know what? You know, I just used to watch you four years ago in that reality, uh, international modeling reality show. But now I can't believe that I'm talking to you right now, virtually. So yeah, thank you again. Thank you for giving me the time and and your effort talaga in gracing this interview. It really means so much to me. Yeah. So before we, before we uh, proceed with the interview, can we give a shout out to all to almost 100 viewers who are watching us on Facebook right now. Oh. So, uh, yeah, can you see Hello, the comments? Everyone. They're all coming in. Jera Nevaro is saying those uh, that eyes. She can joy is saying, "Hi, Maureen, you look so pretty. Oh my God!" Thank you, she chicken. <laughs> Oops, sorry, chicken joy. Na sabi ko, oh my God, I'm so hungry. <laughs> okay, I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and then here from Mau Howard, Howard's uh, watching. Oh, hi there, Life of Howard. Hashtag Maurena. Yeah, he's flooding our comment section now. Maureen, lumaban ka, Paul Velasco, and saying, napakaganda mo naman. Mau. Oh my gosh, Stella, is it you? <laughs> Thank you, Stella, for tuning in. Who else? Um, Giselle is saying, Ang ganda. Ang ganda mo. Hi, Giselle. Ma and then, Life of Forward again. <laughs> hashtag Maurena. So, you know, wow. There's no doubt that you really have, you're really one of the most popular delegates here in Miss Universe Philippines. Talaga. So, you know, how do you feel that a lot of people are saying that you really have a shot in winning this year's crown? Well, I feel flattered and super honored that a lot of people think that way. I'm trying not to get pressured by that because I have my reasons why I'm here and I really want to focus on that. But I just, I am really grateful for all the support and for all the love. I appreciate them all. Uh... Na-realize mo yun, nag-accumulate yung fan base mo talaga no, from that international modeling competition until you got into yeah. showbiz and up until now in your foray in pageantry. Like, no, sobrang, eh, pitiling ko nag-grow sila ng triple over the years. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I mean, I still cry when I think about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, all these people are still here for me and it gets me emotional. So I'm just, I'm really happy. Pero partida, ah, partida, it was only until recently that you finally made your decision to join MUD. How much more was, pa kaya when you had really fully decided like a year ago? <laughs> actually, yeah, but I think this year really was my time and I don't think anything would have changed or maybe actually it's much better that I joined this year because I was more determined than ever. I knew that there was just this short preparation time so there was no time for procrastinating. There was no time to be lazy or anything. If you can, because someone told me, I was a bit worried about the, the short preparation time. And then someone said that it's, 
really depends on you because actually you just need a month or two to to really prepare it depends on your determination so i actually thought that because this time was so short it was much better for me because i had more motivation and the determination was there so i appreciated this more and then what that statement seems so loaded you know sino nag advice sa na it only takes 1 to 2 months pero more than that you know a <laughs> uh, secret okay <laughs> sige huh sorry i want no um i won't say who said that but um it was someone who who's already you know who knows from the it. pageant beauty industry yes <laughs> Yeah, but you know, and I was re- and as I was, you know, reading your first caption, your first uh, Instagram post about your Miss Universe journey. Let me quote you on this. Sabi mo, I've consider, I've always considered dipping my toes in pageantry and committing it to it when I felt ready. It was not until I received my sign from the from the universe that I knew I couldn't wait for that feeling of readiness. So I'm curious to ask, what sign? <laughs> What sign was that na nag-reveal sa iyo? Well, I always ask for signs. I ask the universe, I ask God for signs. And so this time it was my intuition really that got me convinced and also um Sir HB, I mentioned him in almost all of my interviews. So I really he really convinced me to join and then my intuition just would not stop annoying me <laughs> like do this do this now it's it, it just felt right and then so when i called my manager or i just messaged her and she called me she said oh my gosh it, it's your time now you need to do this now but i was not satisfied i said ah god universe please make it obvious to me that it is really my time and so what happened was i was just on youtube you know <laughs> checking my recommendation and this account popped up it was a tar- tarot reading and i had subscribed to the account but the videos of her haven't been on my recommendation for probably more than a year uh, before the pandemic pa so i said why what are you doing here and and i just felt this Be, I, as in, I had this feeling that I had to watch the video, and it was so positive, and I could re- resonate with it. I could um, relate to what was said, and I remember crying after that. And I messaged my manager, and who's who's a, like a mom to me, and so I told her about it, and she's like, "I told you, it's your time." And so we talked with Peter Jerry, and that's where everything started. Okay, so if it weren't for that uh, YouTube recommendation video <laughs> talking about signs, so you're into ano pala, astrology, you really believe in those things. Actually, um, it hadn't been until last year. Last year was a lot of realizations and I have become more spiritual. So ever since last year, I do believe in that. And my intuition has been stronger than ever. Last year, I had this intuition feeling that, oh, um, It was a very negative one. And what happened was I had two of my friends come over for Halloween because I love Halloween. And I one of my friends was feeling a little sick, but he said to me he's 100% sure it's allergic rhinitis. And my intuition was said you're going to regret this, but I let them come in anyways. And so after that I got COVID-19. So uh, yeah, and so I was infected with COVID. And after that, since then I said, "Girl, your intuition you have to trust your gut feeling <laughs> so this was the second time i had a very strong gut feeling and so of course i had my bad experience with not following my gut feeling i didn't want it to happen again so looking at everything right now now that you are here in miss universe so do you think that gut feeling was right after all how are yes. you sizing up the competition so far Definitely. As in, I was in Pangasinan um, just last week, and oh my gosh, just the feeling, and I felt the my present, the presence of my mom through through Chini as well, and it was just all these 
all these things happening right now and I feel like the stars are aligned and whatever happens I am just so blessed to be here and to be part of this this journey and I I just feel blessed I feel grateful and I know that you know whatever happens it was the right choice so so far so good it has parang, oh. has it been what you expected or is it otherwise uh, well, it's much better than I expected, to be honest. I am so excited. I thought I was going to be nervous this whole time because, you know, it's it's a new step. It's a new chapter. It's something that I am totally new at. And I thought that I'd be incredibly nervous. I'd be terrified all the time. But I just get this feeling of excitement because I know that it is just the right timing that ev- all, everything is aligned and my my feeling it's it's just all positive and so again whatever happens i'm just so glad that i decided to take this step and you know i am just i just feel this excitement <laughs> um it is something you know, totally I, new but it's so exciting you know the reason i think the reason why you're saying that's is because i feel like you're in good hands you know Tito Jerry and everyone from Aces oh, yes, has been definitely, very, definitely. has been taking care of you very well, right? Yeah. I mean, one thing that probably <laughs> gets me stressed a lot is myself because there was a time where I did pressure myself. I said, you're not learning fast enough. You're not doing this. <laughs> so right now it's all excitement, but I must admit the first part I was stressing out I was talking to a lot of people like, how do I stop this stress and this pressure? They're like, who's pressuring you? I said, I, I am pressuring myself <laughs> because I want it to be better. I'm, I'm a perfectionist. So um, I try not to be perfect. Yes, I know I'm not perfect. And I'm also even promoting that to not be perfect, to not strive for perfection. But there's this inner battle that I need to, um, to go through and I did get stressed and I did a lot of things, but I think those things helped me a lot along the way. I don't have a lot of sleep. I, <laughs> as in, I tell my, we have this group chat of my, me and my supporters, and I'm always saying that hashtag no sleep. And I think that's totally fine because I know it will be all worth it in the end. So happy pagod in short. Hashtag yes, happy as pagod. in, I, I mean, last year I didn't do anything. I wasted most of my time during the pandemic and I asked for this. So whenever I felt stressed and I started crying and some, you know, my boyfriend asked me, are you sure as in you're really sure that you want to go through through with this? Um, do you regret going through the, through with this and me crying? I'm like, no, I don't regret this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so happy to be part of this. I asked for this. And so I need to be grateful for that. And I have learned to be grateful for so many things. So whenever I get this busy and it stresses me out, I'm like, I asked for this. So I should be grateful for that. Oh, well, that's nice. No, so well, we should, our fan, your fan should thank the pandemic for making you realize that you have what it takes to be Asia's <laughs> next Miss Universe. <laughs> I like that. Well, <laughs> but you know what? To be honest, you know, it's not the first time that we're seeing, you know, an Asia's Next Top Model alumna, you know, cross o- crossing over to beauty pages. I remember your batchmate, Simintu, yes, also joined, also joined another, also joined the pageant after your competition. And then si Katarina Rodriguez as well. So was it about pageants that attract successful models like you to join? Well, I can only really speak for myself. But what made me interested in joining is as a model, you you can't really speak your mind. A lot of people think that models are just supposed to be a canvas. They're just this, that. Once you speak, they won't listen because they say they think you're you're not smart and they don't really consider what you're saying. But the difference with that as a beauty queen is you're expected to speak. You're expected to talk, talk about social issues. You're expected to talk about things that are happening in the world. And I want that. I want to be heard. Even though growing up, I was extremely shy and I didn't want to be heard. Um, 
a lot of things have changed and I just want the, the, the platform to be able to talk about the things that I'm passionate about and not have that the the thought in the back of my mind like oh they're not going to listen to me anyways because I'm just the model and that is what attracted me to that because I I just want to do so many things and I've always wanted to to help and my mom has taught me that growing up and I just wanted to be like her always and being a beauty queen and having this platform just lets me do that. Yeah. Iba talaga yung platform, no? Well, I don't know if probably because, you know, the you know the Philippines, our country, is really famous for its beauty pageant landscape. That's why a lot of people are really into it. Dati, I'm telling you, like a decade ago, no one's, no one's noticing. I mean, a lot of girls, I mean not all girls are really into beauty pageants because some of them would really look down at it because you know it would really be you know some sort of like you know uh, a bikini show or some you know a, a, like objectifying uh, that would you know ob- objectify women but now oh, girls from all walks of life are really you know converging to all these pageant systems just to get their voices heard. So, ang laki talaga. Nagigets ko yung sinasabi mo eh. So, I'm glad, no? I'm glad that, you know, you are realizing the potential of the platform of the, of what you have right now. So, when you won Asia's Next Top Model, of course, you know, you were a dark horse. But now, how do you feel that everyone is pegging you as a front runner for Miss Universe Philippines? Well, I don't, I try not to feel pressured by that. I really don't want to pressure myself. I don't want to feel pressured and to have the feeling that I need to impress everyone. And I mean, being a front runner now doesn't mean anything because you still have to prove yourself. And I'm totally new to this experience. I'm totally new in the, uh, you know, uh, in this beauty pageant scene. And I need to prove myself and I always need to prove myself. So. I guess it gives me that perfect motivation to show that I deserve the hype, I guess. And so, like I said, I don't want to feel pressured. I'm just trying to do my best. And I want to prove them that, you know, I'm worth the hype that I get. So you have to, so what I'm getting from you is that you have to work doubly. Even harder. Much. Even yeah. harder. Yeah, to yeah to justify your hype so yeah i do get you i do get you so so far so good right yeah <laughs> you've been coping I mean, you've, I've been, you've been coping yeah, well. there's some challenges, yeah so you know apart from the pressure how have you been handling the competition do you think this online virtual format that you know mup is adopting is favorable to your candidacy right now because let's face it you really translate so well on screen you really need to work even harder because you need to shine. You need to show your personality through the screen. And that is very challenging, to be honest. But I guess because I have already been a little bit experienced, I didn't have such a hard time. But I know that a lot of other girls probably were. I mean, I still get nervous in front of the camera. and being nervous it is a little harder sh- to show your personality and yeah it's challenging but i think it's also nice that the the fans were able to was that me or you <laughs> the fans yeah. were able to be engaged in this and in all the challenges to feel like they're part of it and so i i do enjoy that the challenges were were virtual so apart from that, what? So yeah, you know, you're very comfortable with this setup. So now that you're here in MUP, so what is Maureen Probowitz offering new to the table this time around? Well, one thing that me and my manager are always going for are we always want to break something and the barriers. And with the Asia's Next Top Model, it was me being being short and experienced and once again i'm inexperienced but a lot of people say that you know face wise and all that i fit the mold 
But to be honest, person. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Personality wise, I don't, and I'm totally fine with that. Dubai I describe myself as awkward, weird, clumsy, and I've embraced yeah. that about myself. And so I'm not trying to fit that mold. I'm trying to just be myself. And with whatever flaws I have, I'm trying to embrace that and show that to everyone. That's nice to hear. So, it's so, where... yeah, it's so important to be the same on stage that you are behind the stage. And you can have different personas, but they should all still be you. That's nice to know that you've never lost yourself in the process. No, because you've been, you know, let's face it, you know, you've been evolving from being a model to a showbiz personality and now as a aspiring beauty queen. Pero I I sense that inner strength. And, you know, in terms of not losing yourself in this whole spectacle of being transformed as an aspiring beauty queen. So I wonder, where do you get that inner strength to power through? Despite all the challenges na mga, na mga na, na, na experience mo, yung mga sinasabi nila sa'yo, about you joining oh she's already she's already um she's already asia's next top model what what does she have to prove so uh, where do you get that in your where do you get your inner strength well one thing is my mom as in she's always taught me to be strong and through all these experiences that i've had they motivate me to do better and to always strive to be the best version that i am and i don't like being stuck somewhere I always want to evolve. I always want to learn new things and I want to get out of my comfort zone to grow. And the moment that I feel comfortable, I know that I'm doing something wrong. And that's why I always strive to do other things. And that is what motivates me as well, is the the willingness and the motivation to grow. I really want to grow and I want to do as much as I can while I'm still young. And I mean, we only live once and we need to realize that we need to reach for the universe we need to reach for our dreams yes i agree so speaking of your mom how does it feel to go through now you know for sure for sure you know a lot of people have been marveling at the transformation of the growth that you that we've been seeing on you how does it feel to go through your adolescence teenage years without your mom by your side was it the reason why you suffered depression well, yes, that's why my my advocacy is actually breast cancer awareness because of my mom, because that is what started everything else. Uh, my mom was sick for eight years. She had breast cancer, but it spread all over. And after that, I was I was so close with my mom. We were praying together. We were doing all the things together. I was closest to her and she knew everything about me. Whenever I had an issue at school, I would always come home crying to her. So after I lost her, it felt like I I didn't want to be in this world without her. I couldn't imagine a world without her. And it was really hard for me because it, it felt like I was going through it alone, even though my sisters had lost her, my, my dad had lost her. I was so aware of so many things as a child that probably not every child goes through i was aware of so so many things and i was aware of what was going on i i was i had an eating disorder before my mom passed away and then i relapsed after she passed away and then i suffered from depression i suffered from anxiety and i always felt like i was treated differently because i i, I call myself a secret problem child I do not know exactly the reason why, but thinking about it now, I was treated a little differently by my parents. Like I was more sensitive and maybe they had noticed that I was more aware of my surrounding and what was going on in the world than any child. I was also, I mean, there were a lot of things happening in Saudi Arabia. We were there when there was compound bombing uh, and then there were terrorists just outside, outside our village. They were shooting outside. So just so many things were happening and it made me so aware of of everything that was going on. So when my mom passed away and I didn't have her anymore and that strength that came with her, I felt alone. And so I went, I um, had depression, I had anxiety and there was a time where I actually was, I guess, 
what's the perfect word without a trigger warning? <laughs> um, I wanted to take my own life. There was a time where I was, I reached that point and I didn't want to be in this world anymore from someone who was so, who had so much faith from my mom and was so religious and who did not understand how someone could ever take on, take their own life. I was in that position. I was so positive before and whenever someone needed help, I was there giving advice. I was always smiling, but deep down I was broken. And so I have, a, I could have a lot of advocacies, but I chose breast cancer awareness because that's how everything started. And I had a lot of struggles. I had a lot of things happen to me. I can't go into detail or we're yes. going to talk for three hours, <laughs> <laughs> but so many things happened to me and that is what keeps me strong. And until just last year, I was, I kept thinking that those negative things were following me and that every time something negative happened in my life, that they're just stacking on each other. But this pandemic, a lot of learnings, I think for everybody um, is that my learning was that I can't keep thinking that those things are following me. I have to do something about it. And this pandemic has taught me to appreciate those things because they have shaped me into the person that I am today. And they have made me so much stronger. And yeah, that's just one yeah. thing. Uh, yes. So no wonder, Kaya pala, you know, despite you were being bullied in Asia's Next Top Model, you persevered, you know, you went through, you emerged victorious in the end. So that explains why na your mom's demise forced you to become mature. Yeah, but life. everything actually, just all the experience that I had have made me so much stronger. So when people talk bad about me, yes, it affects me, but I have experienced so much in my life. I mean, that is nothing compared to what I have experienced. So I'm curious to ask, how were you able to get out of depression during that period of time? I mean, did you have a strong support system? Yes, I had. I had my sister, my younger sister. She is my everything. Well, we're not as close anymore because she's in Germany, but she's always there for me. That The girl that looks more like a model on the very right the way, she, uh, yes she was always there for me when i was going through that very difficult time in my life she was there and i had my sisters who were there for me even though they didn't probably understand what i was going through they were there for me and the support from my dad who was at the time both my mom, mom and my dad yeah. and he had to be so strong for us so he is this also one of the strongest people that I know. So I'm just glad that I had that support. And what what happened afterwards is that I wanted to dream. And he, my dad is the reason why that I got out of that situation. He gave me this book that I never read, <laughs> but I read the first chapter and it changed my view of everything and of life. So I keep forgetting to Google his name. But it is a, he's a, um, I think a motivational speaker and I keep forgetting his name. Oh my gosh, but he doesn't have no arms, worries. he doesn't have legs. And he was saying in the book that he wanted to take his own life when he was younger. He wanted to drown himself in, in the bathtub, but he didn't. And he's so glad that he didn't because if he did, he wouldn't be the person that he is today and inspire so many other people. And that's exactly what motivated me because I said, why do I want to die now? I mean, I have not experienced anything in my life. And what if, what if I become this person and I get to inspire so many? And that's exactly what is happening. Oh, that's nice that you, you're, you have a strong support system, no? Grabe. Considering that your dad has to single-handedly raise you or raise you and your three other siblings, diba? that really says a lot about your dad's character. You know, talagang she must really love your mom so much talaga. So I'm curious to ask that because your sisters are all equally gorgeous. Lang. This, this is just an <laughs> aside. Lang. But how, how was it you were the only one who got interested in modeling? Your 
your sisters could also pass off as models or could also apply in showbiz? Well, I don't know, to be honest, but I guess I was the only one who was not afraid to put my studies aside and do it at a later time. I I just wanted to do this now while I'm young because you can always go back to school, right? You can always go to university when you're 30. And I that was my, the way that I was seeing it. I think my sisters weren't seeing it the same way and they went to university right away in Germany. And it's Cyan because my younger sister, she's so talented as in she got all the talent. I swear she's a singer, she's a dancer, she's great at acting. She's a, she's even a gamer right now. So she got all the talents. And I was a little upset when she didn't pursue this. Um, I mean, as well. But I mean it's still it's not too late now, but I just wish she did as well. And she's she's studying right now, and I'm, I'm so proud of her. I'm actually all proud of all my sisters even though we're going through different things in our life and we're pursuing different things. I'm so proud of them. What course do you want to take up when you want to go, when you plan to go back to school? Well, one thing that I did want to do was interior design, but I think that if I do go back, because then I'll be, I don't know how old I am. I want to do something that... <laughs> You know, something general, I guess, that can help me in different areas. Uh, and so I was thinking of business management. That's what one of my sisters studied. I think, Marielle, did you, if you're watching this, did you study that? I'm so not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting that. I also keep forgetting what my dad does. It's just, I have to keep asking, what, do you, what, what, did, what course did you take again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sana mag comment siya. But you know what, looking at you right now, I can't believe that you've you know, basing from all your cuentos that you've led a very, you know, tumultuous childhood, yeah, because of your mom's demise. So, um, as a Miss Universe candidate, right, as a Miss Universe Philippines candidate right now, and of course, you have a strong following, how could you encourage um, your fans or other people to snap out of their depression? Because, you know, I asked this question because I have relatives who also suffered from depression. And up until now, they, they could not, you know, really move on from their lives because they're still holding on to their past. So, I know, siyempre, when you're depressed, um, you couldn't move on. So, and daming nasasaya ng mga taon. So, ikaw, how were, you know, um, basing from your experience, how could you encourage them that there's life after depression? Well, one thing about depression is I think if you have experienced that dark place, it's very easy to fall back. And even though I'm this person right now, I have those moments still. It's just you need to rise above those moments and you need to see the positive parts of life that it's all it's not all negative. And the moment that you attract positive things, positive things are going to happen. So you need to change your mindset. You need to choose to be positive and that is so hard to do but it is possible and the moment that you choose positive things i promise you positive things are going to happen to you it will always be the balance i guess of negative and positive but remember that after all that negativity positive things are going to happen that's my mindset every time i experience something negative before this journey i had so many things happen i had covid my my cat i was giving her meds i was paying so much for my cat and i was paying for this medication that was not even fda approved and it was so expensive and i was in between you know choosing if i should keep my cat alive or choose to let her die and i was so experiencing so many negative things but i said after all this and i prayed and i prayed I just asked God, I said, I've experienced so many things now, please give me something positive. So that is my mindset is after negativity, positivity happens, but you need to choose positivity and you need to change your mindset. And it is possible, that is one thing. So yeah, and also if you choose positivity, you will also attract the positive people in your life. And one very important thing is to keep your circle really small. Don't try to make friends with everybody, but choose the people that really care for you. I mean, I don't have that many friends and I'm totally fine. I'm totally happy with that. 
I have my family and they're my best friends ever. <laughs> <laughs> Alam mo, na-size up na kita. Kasi, you know, I watched your intro video and you're so proud to be, you know, a cat lover. And they say that <laughs> cat lovers daw talaga introverted. They tend to be really quiet. Diba? <laughs> Oo. So, yeah, I do get you. So, so you know, you know, wow. It's all about positivity and having the strong support system talaga surrounding you. So, you know, you're, you know, I can't help, you know, given your, your, your kwento about Uh, experiencing depression earlier on in life, you know, I can't help but remember one Olympic, per- uh, compare one Olympic personality to your to your situation before. Her name is Simone Biles. She is yes, an uh, she is an American Olympian, and she is you know a gold medalist who pulled out from her multiple competitions in the in the Tokyo Games uh, a month ago. But she ended up winning she only ended up winning a single competition uh and winning a bronze medal so now my question is to you um basing from your experience and her experience do you think do you think that mental health mental health breaks are deterrents for women like you to achieve their full potential Well, one thing that we really need to do is to break that stigma around mental health because mental health is just as important, if not even more important than physical health. And the reason why we have so many people focusing on their mental health now is because people talk about it. And that is so important to let to let to let everyone know that it is normal to go through these things. When I was depressed, when I was experiencing this anxiety i didn't know where it came from and at the time i was suffering alone and i needed that support and it's so important for everyone to talk about their experiences and to let everyone know that you were not alone and i mean if if your mental health is not stable and if you if you're let's say you know part of this journey and your mental health is your hindrance you shouldn't force it because it is so important to take care of it. It is so important to nurture yourself and to give yourself all that love and the rest that you need. So um, for her to take that break, I'm as in, I'm really proud of that as someone who has gone through mental health because it is so important to choose you and to choose your mental health. Yes, Kahit na, ano, at the expense of winning a gold medal. Yes, yeah. as in, what what's what's the point of winning a gold medal when you are broken inside right it's 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 not it's not a nice feeling to have let's say a crown but you're broken inside it won't make you happy the happiness comes from within Gabe Maureen, you're only 22 years old but wow, 23. you sound so <laughs> 23 para you just oh, yeah you just turned older yeah last month so You know, um, wow, for your age, you sound so mature and sensible. And look at, you know, you're looking more polished and confident. So how do you feel when people say that you're too young to win the Miss Universe Philippines title? Girl, you're not too young for to, to do anything. I mean, people need to understand that everyone goes through different paths in their life. And there could be situations that... Um, make them more mature and more aware of their surroundings and there shouldn't be an age to that right i was i mean growing up people thought i was so wise for my age and it really depends on i guess when you find that realization moment when you start growing when you have all these these i guess these moments and I've been aware since I was younger and it's different with everyone. And right now I'm more aware than I was five years ago when I joined Asia's Next Top Model. And I've grown so much as a person. So I don't I don't think you should put an age on anything, right? Yeah, We are all different in our own ways and we grow differently and we, We, be- we strive to become our better selves, our better version of ourselves differently. We, there shouldn't be an age to that. You know, because, you know, the reason why I ask this question, because, you know, if you will notice the trend in Miss Universe nowadays is that, you know, it seems to be preferring girls 
it seems to prefer to crown girls who are already on the mature side who have lived the full who have lived a lot of experiences in life yung mga 25 years old and above but for you it doesn't matter no i've experienced it, it, it more than what one person can experience at what 30. <laughs> we are all, i mean we we cannot be defined by our experiences alone that's true that's true you're right about it so you know moving on i can't believe we're ending <laughs> interview soon guys you know no doubt you know wow can you guess how many people are watching us right now almost 700 people and oh that's only in facebook so i haven't amazing. checked out <laughs> I, yeah thank you guys for tuning in and you, as you can see you know you have one of the huge fan bases in this competition given your popularity and considering the format of this uh of this pageant this year which is online voting so you know i want to ask this does this make you um i want to ask you this since you know you have a lot of fans and you know they've been very active in or very vocal in letting you know that they really support you for your candidacy here in miss universe philippines do you think you know pageants like miss universe could still advocate for world peace knowing that there is just too much negativity or vitriol online definitely i mean we should always strive to achieve that and you really need to go to the root of the issue and why there is conflict and that is usually your home is your own home and being educated and now that there is internet and you can be educated and you can educate yourselves you need to to take advantage of that and I mean, I'm such a peaceful person. I don't like conflict. And that is because I have experienced so much and I have had the support that I needed. And we need to to allow that as well, that everybody gets that support and hatred online happens because like, like when people start hating on me, I always know that it is probably because they're going through something in their life and they didn't receive the love that they needed. And if we could spread, spread awareness of that and let people educate themselves and look into themselves so they can start with them themselves, so many things could change and the world could be a better place. We need to look at ourselves and think, do we want to be treated this way? As in before we send hate me messages, we need to think to ourselves, do we want to receive these hate messages? So it is always that we start within ourselves and we need to let people know that what they're doing is wrong because maybe no one even told them about it. And so, yes, it is so important to still talk about issues like that so that, I mean, conflict and, I mean, war happens because you are not open-minded and we need to teach people open-mindedness and to allow different beliefs and... I mean, one thing that I just cannot understand is why does someone else's belief affect you, right? That is one question that we need to ask ourselves. Does it even affect us? Let's say I have this religion of mine and someone has their own religion. What, in what way would that affect me, right? I can believe in whatever I want to believe in. They can believe in whatever they believe in. Why do we need to impose our beliefs on other people? We can live our lives the way that we want to and not have anyone else impose those beliefs on us. And we need to to learn that we can't do it. It's like but that's the golden rule. Don't do to others what you don't want others to do to you. And yes, people, yes. people forget that. And if we have this platform and we can talk about things like that, then why not? Why, why don't we do it? We should still strive for, to to achieve world peace. And it is possible, but we need to start within ourselves. I wish it's easier said than done. Yes, right? To be honest. Because not everyone yeah. is open to that idea. And that is the problem, right? We so, there are, people need to be more open, need to be, you know, to learn how to tolerate things. And we'll understand that we'll all have our differences and I mean, it's so much harder than what I said, but 
I mean, what I said is true, but it's so much harder to achieve because people are not open-minded. Not everyone can be that open-minded, and I wish that people were. Is that how you would like to, you know, apart from, you know, advocating for breast cancer awareness, is that also how you would like to, you know, um, use your platform, considering that you have a very heavy social media presence? Yes, I will. I will try to do everything to achieve that. I know that I won't be able to convince everyone, but if I can convince one person and if I can, if I'm able to inspire one person and make them realize things, then that is already success. We need to start small and maybe that person will teach their parents. Maybe that person will teach their loved ones. And that is how it works. That is how influence works, especially um, if you use your platform correctly. Uh, wow. Maureen, pwede ka na mag, <laughs> ano, mag, mag, mag-conduct ng workshop. <laughs> I, I would. Oh my gosh. I just, I have this. I know that that's my purpose in life. I know that I just want to help people. But I also want to inspire people because I have learned so much already. And I'm just 23. And that's what I strive to do. I just want to, to have it this impact on people's lives and if i can just change one person's lives or one perspective in a positive way then that is incredible already right mm. i think you, you <laughs> may have already answered my last question what is your last yeah, question <laughs> yeah um yeah so yeah is that one of those things that you would like to achieve here oh yeah, in, with your candidacy here in Miss Universe Philippines, is that your ultimate bit- goal, or do you have an, another goal? Wow, talagang. I was just bitten by a mosquito. That's <laughs> so oh. itchy. But um, yeah, that's one thing definitely. But another thing is, I always strive to be myself, and I want people to realize that that being imperfect, imperfect is your way of being perfect it's what makes you you and what makes you unique and this is the first time i actually embracing who i am and i love who i am ever since i started practicing self-love and i've had so many insecurities before um like not having boobs is one thing but i've embraced that about myself and i am so happy that i was actually able to inspire others to to love themselves just because i started accepting who i am and i want us to celebrate all kinds of beauty because this world is full of diversity and we should celebrate that we shouldn't always strive to be that one person perfect person because it's apparently the beauty standard we need to learn to celebrate all sizes all types of beauty and and that is one thing that i want to do with my platform is really to to just be myself. So I hope that people will learn that when they are themselves, they are the most beautiful. <laughs> Why they kind of opening statement? Like that <laughs> that sounds like an opening statement for you, but with but the way you deliver it, talagang, <laughs> it, it really comes from the heart. No, we're, no, that's really one of your strengths. You're very genuine. So I really, so do you think that talaga your candidacy is coming in at such a perfect time? Because you're very oh, proud yes. of your flaws. You're very, very proud of who you've become in your 23 years of existence in life. Yeah, I mean, the pandemic has come with a lot of blessing in disguise. And that was one blessing is that I've had so many realization moments about myself and I really focused on myself. I really learned to accept my flaws and I learned to accept my bad experiences in a way that I don't, that I don't dwell on them, but I think my bad experiences because they have made me the person that I am today. And through my bad experiences, I get to inspire so many people and especially my supporters who will actually listen to me. I get to inspire them. And that is that's that is so powerful. <laughs> no words, no words. That ends my interview, Maureen. I, I have nothing <laughs> more to ask. Sila and dami pa nilang tanong. They want to ask your thoughts about nations up 
about these countries pulling out from participating <laughs> in Miss Universe. But so, um, pero sorry, uh, under time constraint po ako to, ano, I'm supposed to be doing this interview for only 30 minutes, but I am just blown away with how Marie oh has gosh. been slaying her answers that talaga, we've been almost <laughs> talking for an hour. So I have to wrap this up. So Maureen, thank you so much. Um, thank you. There's, uh, Maureen, alam mo, napahanga mo talaga ako. Parang, wala, <laughs> pagdating sa Q&A, parang bukas, bukas they'll be uploading your interview challenge. For sure, you oh will God. look. <laughs> tomorrow, they just announced it on Instagram right before we oh started God. our interview. They're going to be uploading all your inter uh, the interview portions that you guys did earlier this week. So, I'm expecting that you'll be appearing as impactful and genuine as what you have been doing in this interview since we started a while ago. Thank you so much, Maureen. So as a last question, can you give a message to all your fans and supporters who have been cheering for you, rooting for you to become the next Miss Universe Philippines? Of course. Oh my gosh. I never know what to say because words will not i can't describe my gratefulness and my gratitude in words i just i just want to thank everyone so much for the support and for the love for the messages i really feel it and i really appreciate it so i thank you so much also for helping me get to the top 50. i have not expected this support and to be honest before this journey, I thought that a lot of people have forgotten about me and it, I guess, got me a bit sad. But being here again and taking this next step and starting this next chapter of mine, I have gotten so much support and I am positively overwhelmed by it. And I just want to tell you so much, I tell you that I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful to have you guys and to have your support. Ah, uh, no words, <laughs> Marie. For sure, they are feeling super, super happy to be hearing those, uh, to be hearing those words and that message coming from you. So, maraming maraming salamat. At this juncture, I would like <laughs> to thank all of you for tuning in, for tuning our interview. Wow, talagang hindi sila bumitaw. Intact, 700 people, oh almost 700 gosh. people are watching us on Facebook Thank and almost you. 500 people are also watching us on my, on the live stream on YouTube. So, oh, maraming maraming. So, that's how, you know, you're not just, you're not just a pretty face. You're more than that. <laughs> I'm telling you, talagang, oh girl, this girl's gonna be eating the microphone. Alam mo yun talagang, may, ano pa, may, may hugot ke, may hugot ka. And I'm, I love that, you know, that this is the platform that you chose to expound your who gots in life. So <laughs> I wish you well. Good luck on your Miss Thank Universe you so Philippines much. journey. Marami, ma, eto, um, before we end, can we just give a little shout out to some of the followers that who have okay, that yeah. who are still okay. here? Um Angela Ramos is saying very uh I don't know and dami nila laban <laughs> laban with an attitude ma with an attitude and a heart of a true queen Gisela is saying, you never lakas niya ng aura niya. Bakit ganun? Sabi ni John Carlo. <laughs> um, Gisela is saying, ma, with an attitude of a heart of a true queen. Maureen, para sa kalimang corona, para sa Pilipinas. Shout out po, Israel, bound already. Kevin oh Lawrence is saying. <laughs> diba? Ang advance na sila mag-isip. Love you, Ate Mao Nikos. Uh, what Close is saying, we love you, Maureen. Keep slaying. Uh, Kimuel is saying, Joe May is saying, go at them out. So, th there you go, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Grabe. What hour? I'm going to get it on MUP. I'm sorry. But thank you so <laughs> much, Maureen. Like, thank you so much. I like to talk because. <laughs> You should, alam mo, you should really, uh, know, once you're, whether win or lose, magka-talk show ka talaga dapat. Oh my Yan gosh. Bago diba? namin discovery sa'yo. Yeah, yeah, even a lifestyle show, the ba, That'll where they so could explore perfect. your quirks, passions, and interests oh, in life. That yeah, would be a wonderful showcase, right? So, a uh, huge fan here from, and dami nila, I couldn't keep up with these guys anymore. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Wingirl is also saying, 
Hi po, paki-say ako, paki-hi. Uh, she's he's from the Ashti Ashti's community. Hello. Uh Win Win Carl de Guzman, paki-hi. Oh, thank you. Uh thank you Carl for tuning in. Wim, woman with a substance. Kim Kibum is saying I couldn't keep up anymore. No, wow, I'm blessed. <laughs> and Damil, but we believe in you. Thank you so much, Maureen. That you. is my thank interview. You. Maraming maraming salamat na pinaunlakan mo ang gabing, pinaunlakan mo ako with this interview. Kahit na you've been leading a very hectic schedule, you just came from a very long day, but maraming maraming salamat. <laughs> diba? Sobrang bait mo talaga. Napapasalamat ako. Aces and Queens, Mama Mikey, yes. thank you for also making this interview possible. Thank you so much po. This ends it, Maureen. Virtual hugs and kisses all the way from my office here in Kubo. I'm sending them right back at you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care, Maureen. Take care, too. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for watching.